invite them up on the stage just as I'm starting to speak. So we've, and I will have to look at my notes, I'm afraid. Um, so we've got our moderators, Sarah Berry, who is with the Sydney Morning Herald and The Age. Very, very happy to have her here. And the panellists, well, you've met JK already, so John Kerwin. We've got Paula Bruff, Lynette Edwards, and Laurie Asnavorian. So please join me in welcoming Sarah and all of the panellists to the stage. Yeah, wherever you want. Beautiful. Oh, wow. Good morning. 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 So morning. I am looking forward to this discussion because you all bring such different perspectives and experience to the table. So I think it's going to be really interesting. And I think the logical place to start has to be the pandemic because it's had such a profound influence on our lives, um, not least on the way that we work. So I think what I'd like to know first is in what ways do you think uh, the ways that we're working, our work practices have changed, both for good and for bad? Oh. <laughs> Throwing it out um, to I, So I think the first thing uh, that I noticed is um, that some of my workmates have cats that sit on their head. <laughs> but that's and I good. didn't know that. Isn't that good? Um, yeah. And I thought that was so cool, right? Um, but the second thing was it really highlighted my personality. So I don't know if any of you have read the book Quiet, but I'm an introvert um, that enjoys being an extrovert, but I need to get that energy back. So COVID was devastating for me because I went back into my introverted state. And so I was getting anxious about going back out into the real world again um, because you've got to practice that. You know, you've got to practice being out in the real world. So that was a negative. Um, COVID took so much from, from all of us, but uh, it took my father-in-law um, and it really heightened my wife's anxiety around her mum being in Italy. So, mm. But the positives were, for me, as we're sitting here talking about mental health and we're all way more aware of that. Um, so that was a real positive for me. People are starting to talk about their mental health. You're generally caring for people on the Zoom. So they were the three mm -hmm. big things for me that I think personal. Um, so what did it do to me? Second thing is what it's done to people around me and what does that feel like? And then the third thing is what, I, what can I take back from COVID? You know, for example, um, I started playing the guitar yeah. during COVID because I was sick of COVID taking shit from me. I sound like I'm killing a cat in the lounge, but it's really good for my mind and, and getting away because like I said before, you know, this is end of the day, we've gone from one COVID to the other. We don't know why our eyes are watering and we're freaking out a bit. So they were the three things for me. Fantastic. Any, anyone else? Uh, I can talk. There you so go. Um, morning, everybody. Nice to be here. So as a university researcher, I look at the evidence around what's been happening overseas and what we're doing here. Um, so the positives have been, as we all already know, really, things like, you know, less commuting, more work-life balance, generally. Um, maybe a bit more control over your work hours and how and where you work. Um, the negatives really have been, as we've seen, and the whole point of this conference is increased stress, increased pressure, um, issues around balancing work, parenting, looking after children, especially during lockdowns, um, and also the issues around jobs insecurity and increased anxiety. So that it also has been swings around aboutts around the world. Mm. Um, in addition to what you have both said, which is very but a ring true with, with my experience as well, um, I run um, sort of the HR division of um, uh, Edelman, which is a, a global PR and communications agency. And um, we sort of one minute you're at the office, the next minute you're in lockdown. And we, we had a bit of prep done and we thought we were kind of on top of this. But when it happened, we just had to throw everything out the window because... Um, uh, suddenly the, the policies and the, the benefits and the rigidity that we had around certain um, processes and procedures just made no sense. Mm -hmm. So um, it was scrambling to keep up, you know, a lot of people were at home parenting young children, suddenly they, they couldn't do their jobs, um, clients were pulling out, um, a, lot, a lot of our workforce was quite young, um, we have a lot of um, people in their 20s, highly ambitious, A-types, very driven, um, and uh, they were just, they'd never experienced anything like this before, of course, and um, they didn't know what to do. Uh, so it was a bit of 
being, you know, putting my tough HR hat on, but also being an empathetic, um, nice person and just trying to help them through and taking a lot of that on board personally. I had twin boys doing year 12 last year, so um, getting them out, then they basically just had to be self-sufficient, to be completely honest. I was like, you're fine, you've got each other. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, just having to scramble to keep up with what was best, but to ensure consistency and professional policies that would be that would make sense coming out of it. So yeah, every day I just thought, you know, where's the crystal ball? <laughs> yeah. What what are we actually planning for? So it was an extraordinary experience. Yeah. Mm. Okay, Laurie, did you? Want yeah, to? yeah. No, I'll take a different approach altogether. Um, my perspective is as a as an architect, and as someone who is focused on commercial office buildings and workplaces. It's been pretty obvious that the pandemic has pointed out all of the bad and all the good things about the environments that we work in. One of the things that I thought was really interesting about it all, though, and this is a positive thing, I think, is that we've all been complaining about going to work, or we were, for <laughs> prior to the pandemic, and I don't want to go into the office. And, it, and, and then suddenly, we started to realize that um, we have a real attachment to these places that we work in. And they really tie into our sense of identity. Mm -hmm. So we all kind of um, equate who we are to, you know, we ask questions about where do you work or where did you go to school or where do you live? And so all of a the sudden, the, the power and the importance of place mm. is kind of sitting in the back of our minds. And so I think what's interesting about this as we think about moving forward, I look at the pandemic, it, it, I hope will have a huge impact on the way we design physical environments and the types of spaces that are in our workplaces. It'll have a huge impact on cities and vibrancy of cities. But what, what I hope will really happen with this is that we'll really start to think a lot more about how places impact us as human beings mm. and, and the importance of that and that hopefully the whole physical space and psychological space and sense of meaning and purpose and all of that will come together. And the, the meaning and purpose thing is, has become a really big thing. Um, as people have recognized that the institutions and organizations that were meant to support them during the pandemic have failed, they're looking for greater sense of purpose and meaning. And I think that certainly that's one of the greatest opportunities for our cities and for our workplaces to begin to fill those gaps is how can we use physical environment to start to reflect and support what your individual purpose or meaning, what your organization stands for. Mm, so interesting. Um, and, and I think I might stay with you for a moment, Laurie, because uh, I think the, the sort of next question is off the back of the pandemic and with all of these things in mind, with all of these changes to the way that we are feeling and working, um, how has that changed the concept of a flourishing workplace and, and how we go about creating that? So perhaps if we start back with you from a, from a physical environment perspective. Well, the way, what, at the moment, a disclaimer to start with is, Quite honestly, we don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So right now, there's a lot of guesses going on. And so one of the first things that will have to be changed is that we're going to be going into a time of rapid experimentation, reinvention, trialing, failing, changing what happens with our workplace. All, most of the research that you look at out in the world today, though, when it's been looking at how the pandemic has or will impact workplaces are that um, most workers don't want to be going back to the workplace all the time. So you've already heard this term hybrid environment. So what will hybrid environments mean to physical environments? It means that what happens inside the workplace will be different. And so um, what we believe it will be is a stronger focus towards what we're calling togetherness places. So the reason that you're going to go into the workplace is not to sit and read your emails. Mm. It may not be, and this is a generalization, some people are going into the workplace because they can't work at home. But it's not going to be doing, to do f focused solo work. You can do that better at home. And so the workplace will be reorganized to support togetherness activities. So that's working with teams, that it's connecting with each other socially and professionally. Because the reason we want to go back in is to see my mate. Mm 
to have a cup of coffee, to work together on a project, to use some great technology that I haven't got in my kitchen. So uh, that, that's kind of what we believe will happen. Mm -hmm. And so it, a lot of organizations now are starting to think about slowly evolving the percentage of individual space to be smaller and the percentage of these togetherness spaces to be a little bit larger. So, so our workplaces will be around connection. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Lynette, would you like to? Yeah, look, I, I completely agree with, with, with what Laurie is saying. I, th I think that we have to be careful we don't overcomplicate this mm -hmm. and sort of throw ourselves into, oh my gosh, we've got to you know, invest so much time and so much money into working out what's right while the clock's ticking and mm -hmm. we're not actually doing anything. So we, um, we have totally recognised exactly what Laurie said, which was people people need to feel excited about coming back. They need to want to be there. It's all very well to tell them they have to come in, which I have now done. We have a three-day-a-week mandate with two compulsory days. Is it working? Kind of. Um, but in doing that, we also have explained to them why that, is, um, that exists. Um, but we've also we've introduced just little fun things and just some new, some new things that are making it a more appealing workplace. These are not major... Um, expensive initiatives. We are working towards some, some different types of things that take a bit more planning. But in the meantime, we're just doing some community things. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're, revving, we're ramping up a few things. We've changed a few, like the bar was on a Friday at you know, 3 o'clock. Now it's on a Thursday at 4 o'clock. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just little things like that, enormous. Um, a free lunch before payday. Um, we get food in and have it all in the kitchen and now we do that on either a Tuesday or Thursday depending on when it falls. Suddenly there's a lot of people in the office, you know, just to have some salads and food around the, around the, the, the kitchen table at the office. Um, little things like this are making a massive difference. But also, um, you know, humans are habitual creatures and we need to create new habits. Mm -hmm. So it's just chipping away and helping them to understand that coming in is pretty cool. We've got extraordinary offices. It's really beautiful. Um, we've got some great things happening. Uh, you're, not, you're not going to learn and flourish um, if you're at home. We'd, we're appealing to their ambition and we're helping them to understand that if you're there, you're going to see things, hear things, learn things, and mix with people that you wouldn't be doing behind a screen. Mm -hmm. And that is going to further your career. That's going to get you a promotion. That's going to help you to you know, have better development and that's what's working with our people. So are we doing studies on a global level with our, with our we're, we're a global business and we're investing a lot of money in, in organisational structure, um, what the new hybrid workplace looks like, all sorts of things, but we can't wait for that. Mm -hmm. It's about something little every week to help them to come back in. Mm. Paula, quickly, would you like to? Yeah, sure. So, so I've been beating this drum about workplace well-being and the impact of work on stress and uh, mental health of workers for about 20 years we've been working in this space. And suddenly it's become so um, significant and important. It's sort of uh, taken us all a bit by surprise. But the, the work we've been doing in, with my group has been looking at um, three main things, really. We know the hybrid work environment is happening all around the world and is happening here. So we're trying to work out, like the speakers have said, the best ways and, and the whole point of it, really, best ways to get people back in. And there's three key takeaways, I would suggest. So we've been looking at how to re-energize the organizational culture. It's been decimated in many areas. So we've been trying to of all the fun things, but also the more serious things, and looking at evaluating actually what works long term. Um, we've been looking at reconnections, how to get the team back in, how to connect people again, how to stop people feeling so isolated, and that in turn will reduce workers' anxiety. Um, and the third one is cohesion. So how to work properly as a team again, as an organization again, how to feel connected, like the speakers have said. So three key things, really. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, John, I'm going to throw this question to you. Um, I'm interested in what some of the things workplaces in Australia are doing to attract and retain talent now, mm -hmm. um, how that compares to what people are doing internationally. Um, and I guess finally, third part of that question is just how to avoid it being seen as lip service, which I think a lot of the wellness initiatives can risk mm -hmm. coming across as. Um, so the first thing I want you to do is either uh, lean over to the person next to you or in front of you and tap them on the back and say, congratulations to you. Can you all do that? 
Congratulations, congratulations to you. Congratulations to you. <laughs> yeah. And then say, then say to yourself, congratulations to me. Yes. Yeah. Congratulations to me. So COVID was this massive fear, right? But you know what it did to all of us? It made us really agile. It actually took us a year sometimes to get change. We did it in three days. Invented new things. So now that the world's going back to normal, what were the three key things that you all did that made you so damn awesome that you adjusted to this pandemic? You communicated probably more openly. You spoke about your fears and you decided what was best for the group of you in this situation and boom, you changed. And you know what? You failed. And you thought, shit up, we failed, at least we know. Right? Failure is fear, but it doesn't need to be. And we were lucky that we had this big fear out there called COVID. So the other fear is about breaking stuff and changing stuff, right? We didn't worry about too much. So for me, we don't know what the answers are, right? But if we don't worry about failing fast, if we communicate all our feelings, right? And if we try stuff constantly, then we'll get to the answer quicker. I could not sit here and tell you what the future will look like in 12 years. Because you know who's going to decide? You awesome people, right? But if you go back into your shells and you're not scared to say to the boss, shit, I've got to pick up my kids, um, my, my, my mum's unwell, which is what you've done for the last two years, mm -hmm. and the boss goes, oh, that's sweet, and you start getting into different areas, right? The hard thing is the extroverts want to go back to work. The introverts want to stay home. You've got a life now that has been controlled by a pandemic. I always remember my uncle Gordon. The war was the biggest damn thing in his life. And I was so lucky I didn't live it. He used to talk about it all the time. What are we going to be talking about? What is the biggest significant change in the world in the last two years? COVID. We're not going back to normal. However, if we all show courage, if we talk about what we want for ourselves and how that might work, we will come to the most beautiful thing that's happened in the last hundred years. But we've got to have courage, right? You've got to be yourself. You've got to put your mental health first, your family part of it. You know, if I asked you all, how are you managing your imbalance? You know, where's your family come into it? Where does work come into it? Where does yourself come into it? Where does play come into it? How's those percentages? And I think COVID, like you've all mentioned, has changed those percentages, and some of us don't want to go back to the old shit we used to do. Yeah. Actually, it was more yeah. stressful. Absolutely. And so uh, maybe, you know, could, could someone speak to what, what are workplaces doing to uh, take care of that? We don't want to go back to how it was. So what, what's happening now? Well, can I say that we're listening to our people? So we've got an open dialogue, and there's a culture of transparency and trust. It, it's a hard thing because people are not brought up that way. Um, but uh, we, we're, we're asking them, we're talking to them, we're inviting them to have a seat at the table mm -hmm. and talk to us. So, lead, you know, the hierarchy has just gone, it's, yeah. it's flattened. Someone just put a big, you know, COVID foot on it and it's flattened out. And that's really healthy. Um, but you say they still need to know who to look to for guidance sure. and who's in charge, of course. But it's a very different... Um, you know, mix of, um, of, of conversation. Yeah. Okay. We're fast running out of time. In fact, we've run out of time. So I'm going to ask you uh, each a, a very quick question. Um, I'd just like uh, one thing that from your perspective, from your expertise, people can start to think about in terms of going back to their own workplaces and creating a flourishing workplace. Communicate. Continue to communicate what best suits you. Keeping your... You guys are awesome. How are you going to be the best you possible? You need to communicate that with the bosses. We never used to do this. We used to leave half our personality at the door. That's over. So tell your bosses so they know, and then just be awesome every day around that balance. Mm. Yeah, I agree. And I think, I think the issue about, about not relinquishing back our control in a way, back to the organisations, not, give, not giving it away again. So I think... I think people have, feel, have felt quite, em or some people have felt quite empowered over the last couple of years to, to shape work into the way that they, it works best for each of them as individuals. And I think that's important to, to continue to embrace that and continue to work to develop that hand in hand with our organisations. Mm -hmm. Definitely um, what you guys have said, but for me also, um, no judgment. 
um, people have have changed and they have felt they've laid everything out. They haven't had any choice over the last couple of years. And we we have to bring openness and acceptance to the table and to be careful not to judge people in this new sort of post-COVID um, phrase, phase. I'm going to take on JD's word that he used earlier, and that is um, to have courage. Uh, I would hate to see us waste a good pandemic. I was going to yeah. say, I think this will be the only one that we have, but now we do have monkeypox. But it, it, we don't. things don't have to be the way that they were in the past. This is a really great time for us to reassess and change how we operate. Beautiful. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.